our live analysis on Monday this uh, time. And uh, the reason is just uh, for the sake of U.S. retail sales, since bizarrely, uh, U.S. decided to announce them on a Monday afternoon, so uh, which is not usually the case. So we are here for a line of analysis, as usual. We're going to discuss right now the results because they are already out. Feel free to ask me anything you want in regards to the markets, the fundamentals, any um, technical analysis that you want me to go through. Feel free. It's your session, as I keep saying. So before we check the... Actually, let me share. Let me share with you uh, the uh, platform, the US, uh, more precisely, the dollar index. Let's start with that one since we have the uh, the U.S. <coughs> sorry, since we have uh, the retail sales from the U.S. So uh, here we are. Actually, oh sorry, or have I done? And here we are. Keep the chat on. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Welcome. And this is the dollar index in a 15 minutes chart. Uh, let's discuss right now the uh, data out of um, the US. Retail sales at 0.7%. Uh, and the, that was the monthly reading. And also the excluding autos 1.1% in March. So a significant growth and a significant bit of expectations. So the, the, the retailers basically double or even triple of what was expected. If we exclude autos, it was three times more than what was initially expected and double from last month, while the, oh, the headline uh, also doubled, doubled, revised higher as well. A very, very uh, a sign of growth uh, for the U.S. retail sales, and that is quite. Uh, that's why why we've seen the dollar, the dollar actually spiking. I would try. I would like to remind you that you, this is the uh, live um, fifteen minutes chart for dollar index. You can see this spike. I'm gonna put a headline actually. Uh, just to everyone, because I can see that you keep joining and joining. I will put a, a, a note so you will be in line with me. 15 minutes. This is what we are seeing right now. Index. Can I show it? Yep. You can see at the bottom of our screen the uh, what we are covering right now. Dollar index and 15 minutes chart. A spike. A breath away. Actually, br bridge already 106, isn't it? Yeah, ah, breathe away from the 106 level. And uh, really, really a significant spike and a significant result as well if we consider what happened last, last week as well uh, with um, all this data, inflation, G um, in general, the latest news, NFP, uh, a week before, uh, inflation last week, a very, very, very um, strong uh, picture out of the US. As I, 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 I feel that I'm repeating myself, but this is indicating that uh, uh, the growth continues for the uh, US and that is adding to the inflationary pressures uh, for the US and postpones with this way any any um, expectation uh, any any odds and uh, actually po postpones the scenario for uh, a rate cut anytime soon and this is the reason why we have seen on the the initial reaction from the dollar to be on the upside simply because indicates that we're going to keep or fed should keep i don't i, I need to keep the um, all these scenarios in place that uh, fed will uh, actually uh, keep 
the rates unchanged for the time being. Uh, if we since they keep saying that they are, remain data dependent. So by considering the data, this is the, what the data is pointing uh, for the central bankers. So how, hi, everyone. Hello, <laughs> hello, Emmanuel. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, Drago, Macallion, welcome. Welcome, everyone. So yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I would like as well to start with um, to to uh, shift to the dollar yen, uh, dear uh, Rudy. Yeah, so this is, I know that you can see a lot of lines over here. Let me change also the caption. And you can see a lot, a lot of, um, a lot of um, lines over here, but I will keep them on purpose. First of all, because I would like to uh, go back and sit together what we have discussed last week and a week before as well so all these lines and more precisely if i zoom out a bit or if i i move further higher into the weekly chart i would like to remind you that we have set this fibonacci in the case that the dollar yen breaks our order blocks to the upside and extends higher so indeed this is what happens so let me just remind you come on that that was an order block that i put a note on like two weeks ago it rejected it here it was it was an it was a note that i i discussed several times in my uh, last few lives it was an order block uh, which unfortunately it was rejected and in the dollar yen spike higher extending to uh, initially 152 area, 153, another consolidation area had been seen, as you can see, last week, which was again rejected with this move to the upside, uh, extending to 153.30 area. And just this is one way, actually, the, the ceiling is supposed to be 155. Why I'm saying that this is supposed to be the ceiling? Because the officials, from a lot of comments that we had from the Japanese officials, the government, the Bank of Japan, uh, and etc., it was that they will not, uh, the, the ceiling for the dollar yen would be 155. Otherwise, if they see that it breached this ceiling, they will intervene. So um, we're just a bit on them. I'm not going to say cautious mode. Indeed, there is a, a lot of rally and a lot of uh, boost from the buyers to push the price, the price higher. But what I, what that looks that looks to be is just a a boost in order because remember, as I mentioned, the, the, there is a very 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 high risk of intervening by dollar by uh, by uh, the Japanese authorities. And it seems that on all these news, not only we have a strong dollar, but we have a pretty, pretty weak yen because it seems that the market participants for dollar yen trying to push the price to 155 or even higher just for the sake of selling the pick. This looks to be the case. I mean, uh, it's it's at levels that we have never seen in the past. It broken two years highs. It, as I said, um, we had reports last week coming from officials saying that we're not going to leave dollar yen moving up to 155, and it's nearly there. So I'm. I'm really, really wondering when the the Japanese will intervene because we're nearly there. The the, is, the market is like it's like saying, yeah, I'm pretty much pushing higher just for the sake of selling higher. So this is what that looks to me. Obviously, fundamentals support this. Indeed, they did support this. They support the the strong dollar, the strong data from the U.S. Indeed, support this rally, but. 
um, uh, yen right now has seen to levels that that it's the weakest in 34 years it has never been if I'm not mistaken has never been um, uh, at those levels before and if it was I, if it was I was like let me just check out of curiosity uh, just to have the news feed, just in case we see something new coming up uh, around Japanese uh, uh, currency, around the yen. But it's at 34 years lows. Uh, and it's, it's, it's quite weird that we haven't seen a Japanese authority taking all the necessary steps yet. I was expecting a really snap and quick reaction. Nonetheless, nonetheless, any questions regarding dollar yen, guys? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is not what I, I, I'm saying, uh, mighty. Saying that you need to be careful because, uh, yeah, there is at least uh, there is the fear and the risk that they will intervene at any time within the day or even within the week. week. So, uh uh, so keep that in mind. Set an appropriate risk management. Uh, do your uh, appropriate risk management before taking any trade, any shorter trade. But have this in mind, yes, for for sure, especially uh, within uh, the day, within the week. Um, so risk management <clears throat> is key, especially today and especially this week, and especially because it's very very close to uh, 155 level um it's the weakest currency so far today nearly five percent down the yen uh precisely um so and pretty much the i felt that the market uh the markets are just waiting for for the bank of japan to announce something anytime soon so just Keep put some. What I'm 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 saying, mighty, is do your homework, set set some support and resistance levels, pending orders uh, as well, limit orders. So you will be well prepared if we have this intervention and we we see eventually a, 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 the beginning of a new trend but so limit orders pending orders uh, uh, stop limits and etc to be prepared do your homework check your the key support and resistance level just to prepare yourself uh because yeah it's uh 155 is the very very next key psychological uh, level to be closely monitored and any any headlines coming out from the uh, from the Japanese authorities. So in the meantime, as you can see, it already breached or broken all the resistance levels of the day, right? Uh, this candle obviously hasn't closed yet. We have another fifteen minutes to go until this latest uh, this candle closes. As you can see, it breached the third resistance of the day, but remains shy means below it at 154.25 uh, level so that that resistance is still uh, remains the resistance of the of the day while uh, the, the new support the new support in the intraday basis is the resistance number two so this has now uh, converted into an immediate support level for any intraday trader and it's scalper and etc. So this is the the immediate support uh, support level for intraday uh, traders. And okay, so let me just. So there is a sign over here from Stochastics Solely, a pullback sign. 
but uh, we don't see, we've seen it a main, a mainly, this is 30 minutes chart, we've seen a mixed picture in the very, very short time frame. The stochastic is, it has bearishly crossed, indicating that there is the need of a correction, there is the need of a pullback, but RSA remains a key points to the upside, price the same, moving average the same, so let's wait and see. Just, uh, I saw what I said, pending orders, can you really help with your risk management, uh, guys? Pending order, limit orders, uh, stop orders, etc. So, um, yeah. Uh, hello, hello, the day noted. What do you think about Dow and NASA based on fundamental analysis? Very, very interesting market that in general because we have the earnings season. Let me shift to the Dow. Let's start with that white template. White template. Let's start with a daily chart just to discuss also this correction. And my dear friend, let me change the caption as well just to. So this is the Dow, otherwise US 30 in a daily chart. Okay. Are you with me? I have hope that you are. So we have this pullback for two more than two weeks now, actually since, since the beginning of April. And um, very important, actually the whole April, if you if we have to specify, it was the very, very, very first, um, first of April that this pullback started moving significantly and extending significantly below the 50-day moving average, which so far had been a nice support level for Dow Jones in this daily chart. Okay, and I will amend them a bit. If I'm not mistaken, the exponential was a much better one. And let's add also the 20. Here we are. 20 with the yellow one uh, with the, let's make it green yeah perfect perfect so yeah uh so that that pullback this reversal started since for, for two weeks in a row it was key it is key basically that last week we had let me zoom in we had the uh, breakout of 50-day moving average as well, indicating that uh, that my uh, this my uh, indicates the start of a new downtrend for the Dow after um, after basically one, two, three, four, five con five months rally. Indeed, we still, I think we are just at 23%. Let me just measure it. Yeah, we are just, uh, uh, we're, we're for a second day in a row below the 23.6 Fibonacci level on this uh, big up leg that we have seen since the end of October. Uh, but the fact that RSI, MACD, the price action, the breakout of moving average, um, averages, all these uh, imply to a, um, a shift uh, of the medium term outlook for Dow to a po from a positive into a negative one. What um, extended and at further pressure on Dow, it, it was also the earnings from the earnings from the other than the the U.S. interest rates, the inflationary pressure. It was also the uh, the earnings uh, from the banks on Friday, uh, and in general, as I said, we, we have uh, the earnings season started. So anything that is giving any news out of earnings indicating that um, that. Uh, I don't know, it might be... So, for example, J.B. Morgan, okay, even though they they, they, are, they, they, uh, public, they, they have published their earnings report on Friday for the first quarter of the year, 
their earnings report beat expectations, the EPS beat expectations, revenue beat expectations. However, they have um, in their statements, in their reports, they have the forecast, uh, their expectations for the U.S. economy, and their forecast, uh, 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 in their forecast, they stated that the U.S. is expected to grow in, in a modest level. So uh, that is what... Um, uh, added further pressure on the JP Morgan and uh, to the whole sec- sector. Uh, and that's why we have seen also a decline to the related US indices such, a, such as Dow Jones, S&P 500, and etc. So well, precisely on Friday, uh, remember that it was also that not anticipation, the fear of a, of an attack from Iran to Israel that also um, uh, picked up treasuries and added pressure on the bonds. Okay, and that's also extended. This is the this is the Friday's candle that was very decisive and big one and extended this decline that we have seen for two weeks in a row. So momentum is changing it turned negative even though the signal line is still above zero rsi uh, in a in a in a decline if i if i connect the highs i can see a downwards trend for the time being um yeah that was definitely a bearish signal that the breakout uh, of uh, the two uh, moving averages, so the overall picture is changing for Dow uh, into a negative one with the next very important support level if uh, the asset continues with further uh, negative um, sessions with the very next support level to hold at uh, December's to January support, which is a confluence of 38.2 Fibonacci level and also Remember this gap over here, so it coincides. So that that area over here coincides. Fibonacci levels, uh, a consecutive support level. Uh, um, sorry, a, a support uh, area for two months in a row, and a gap back in December. So very very uh, important support level. If the Dow continues to post high uh, lower lows and lower highs a very sharp slope actually in this um in this uh, decline over here in this drift so based on fundamentals let's 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 close your question my dear friend basically uh, ideally right Actually, the, remember that we start the year believing that finally the Fed will exit from this really high and aggressive uh, policy with really high rates, interest rates, and etc. And it will uh, finally start cutting interest rates. So this is something that supports the corporate sectors, the companies, and as a consequence, the uh, the U.S. indices as well. However, why the fact that we haven't seen that and now um, uh, the fact that we are expecting the Fed to keep rates unchanged for a while and to keep them high is something that has a negative impact into the markets and into, sorry, into the U.S. indices and to the uh, corporate sector because it means that they will keep having higher expenses uh, and etc. That's why we've seen that any news related with a postponement of Fed interest rate uh, cut is negative for uh, the uh, for the corporate sec- sector and for the U.S. indices as well. That's the one thing. Geopolitics also in play. And third. And uh, but not not least for sure is the earnings season, uh, which on the one side, if we have reports positive reports presenting growth and etc., they should help the U.S. indices to the upside. But if we see 
in the in such as uh, such as such as in the JP Morgan forecasts from these uh, companies, banks, etc. Regarding a modest growth in the U.S. economy, that is something that will continue to add pressure to the uh, U.S. futures. Okay, hope that a uh, big big comment from <laughs> big big comment uh, just now, dear uh, Emmanuel, help. If not, keep asking. L- let me know anything else that you need from me, and I will try to explain it. So, uh, gold, yes, let's shift to gold to see, even though the, okay, let's actually have, where is my, okay, let's have a white background as usual. Let's start with a white intraday one. (laughs) That's the 30 minutes chart. Let's change the caption because I know that um, a lot of you are asking about gold. That's a 30 minute star, uh, chart and I, I wanted to start with it because we've seen a bit of a, a, a kind of a triangle in the short term. Sorry, wrong. But if you just check today's performance, going to see that it looks like a triangle, right? So a bit, a bit uh, narrow, squeezed a bit, sideways remains below the pivot point of the day, um, just bouncing between 23.60 and 23.40 territory, very, very sideways so far uh, today after the the huge decline that we've seen, uh, not huge actually, if I put it in terms of uh, significant decline that we have seen on Friday um, because of the expectations of, uh, of, uh, actually uh, because of the, of the, um, uh, of the geopolitics and the fear of, of uh, having a, a wider conflict in the Middle East, which for now has been avoided. It seems that some comments from Mr. Biden, from uh, Iran, saying that that would say let's not let's not further escalate the situation, uh, ha- has um, make the markets calm down a bit, bit or stabilize at least. Uh, so. Quite narrow um, sideways uh, gold today after uh, coming back lower off its highs uh, on Friday. Uh, it seems that, yeah, can you see that RSI is quite flat? There is some very, in the very short time frame, such as a really tight uh, time frame, such as 30 minutes chart, and etc. There is a, a bit of a move to the upside but as you can see looks that it already um uh, it has already uh, run out of steam so uh there is um the store has again the rsi flatten indicating that that might not be further steam to the upside in this very very short time frame so yeah it's mainly uh, it's a very flat a steady gold for the time being uh, today. So we'll, we need to basically focus on spotting some, on, on setting some support and resistance levels. So so last week's highs and last week's uh, lows could be um could uh, be uh, our um, initial support and resistance levels. And for anyone that is a a short-term trader, just place these trend lines connecting the highs and the lows uh, to have this triangle, uh, intraday triangle, uh, just to uh, get alert of any uh, move to the upside or any move to the up uh, downside for gold. Let me double check the pivot points, my pivot points, just to make sure that 
Yeah, it's in the daily chart. Yes. All good. Yeah. Very, very flat, muted in general, uh, subdued performance from uh, gold so far today. It might be the job politics still at the background uh, to see whether the um, Israel and Mr. Netanyahu are going to uh, come out with an announcement, whether the, or is the fear of uh, any escalation even though it's stable because we are seeing that the markets have um, uh, stabilized a bit on this re on this uh, announcement from president as uh, president Trump, uh, president Biden sorry as i mentioned earlier and from iran that iran said that, that that was the very end we don't want any further escalation and president uh, biden stated that um this situation shouldn't be escalated further and Washington in general is keep taking action to keep the uh, the situation um, to ease a bit uh, this conflict. So uh, uh, bonuses uh, you need to check i think there is there are some uh, let me ch i'm not quite sure it depends on the region my dear uh, uh, dear nasta you need to check the website uh, to be honest you need to check the website uh, or uh, check with our support team in the website is the live chat uh, with the support team and they will uh, let you know for anything coming up, okay? Um, I cannot really recommend a strategy because that depends solely on you of what kind of trader you are, dear mighty. So you need to figure out first what kind of trader you are before uh, uh, analyzing any and and study strategies and figuring out which ones are for you and which uh, you feel comfortable with and etc. So you you need to start from the beginning. Um, I don't know your level. I you mentioned that you're quite a beginner. So even if we or someone uh, advise you some strategies, they, they might don't work for you. They might be too stressful. For you, they might not justify, um, satisfy um, your uh, daily routine. By daily routine, what I mean, I don't know whether you, how much time you have every day to focus on the markets, or you, whether um, you have the full day to watch the markets. Or you need to figure out first of all uh, how much time you can invest per day on online trading. And then to figure out what kind of, of a trader you are. Okay, that, that basically depends on several things. On your, on the time that you have to spend, every, that you can spend uh, every every day into the markets, into studying the markets and uh, keep yourself up to date. Uh, on your emotional control uh, and what makes sense to you. Because there are strategies that, Okay, uh, indeed, it makes sense to me. I do understand it. I understand uh, what in the, what it's it signals and etc. But there are strategies that uh, I you, can, you might can not follow. I mean, it's um, each one of us has a different interpretation, right? Different interpretation of uh, RSI, for example. Uh, RSI my shows for you something different than what I understand from watching my RSI. So it's a very, very general uh, question. I, we cannot, any, no one can recommend you a strategy if you don't find out what kind of trader you are. Okay? Uh, Cad Yen, of course. Nicolus, cut yen, of course. In general, the yen crosses uh, were like they were 
very, very, very significant and very like the hot topic of the the hot assets of the uh, of the whole year, if you ask me. But um, so this is euro yen. Let's check the cat yen. Show all. Perfect. Okay. Ah, that's why you're asking because it's on fire. On fire. Thank you for bringing that up, uh, Nicolas. So, cat yen it is. Let's do some analysis, technical analysis together. So, let's start with the with the daily chart, my dear friend. So, consolidating for uh, a month now. Yeah definitely month with let me just make some notes okay i'm gonna get rid of the pivot points for now just to see the overall picture this is the one month performance as you can see sideways bouncing uh we uh, between the 110 86 and 112 47 territory so this are the uh, ceiling and the bottom of this one month ranging market so remember if we are in a ranging market the bottom and the, the bottom and the top of the of the ranging market is could be used as very very important and key support and resistance levels so to the upside resistance remains at another 15 pips higher which is the 11247 uh, and to the flip side, the support remains well, 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 uh, uh, far away actually from the current price at 110.86 level. Now, this is the overall picture uh, with the um, RSI holding above 50 for two months now. Yeah. So that's. Uh, indicates neutral to positive overall low, overall medium term uh, picture for the CAD. Yen, uh, I'm gonna ignore the S and P 500 for now because I'm in a daily chart. Actually, let me just daily white. That should that should be the most appropriate template for a daily chart. Uh, holds above the long-term moving averages macd flat but well above zero both the signal line so that indicates that there is a sustainable bullish bias um uh, so far rsi above 15 is keep pointing higher so the uh, overall my dear friend remains to the upside a break of the ceiling of this um, uh, one month ranging market could indicate further steam to the upside with the very next resistance level to be at let's put let's use some fibonacci extension expansion sorry in order to find out find out the oops sorry wrong oh Wrong, wrong, wrong. Up. Oh. Sorry for that. Just a second. Ex Fibonacci expansion here, here, and here. And here we are. Uh, let me place it as it should. Okay, is the low, high, correct, perfect, so let's get back to the daily chart, sorry guys, just a second, 
fix everything perfect. So the in a, if the asset actually confirms, if and only if, okay, pay attention to what I'm, I'm gonna say, uh, if the asset exits the one month ranging market and close to date above it outside, then this could indicate that the doors are open further to the upside with the next important level to be closely monitored, the 161 Fibonacci extension, which is at another nearly 100 pips higher at 113.40 territory, okay? Of course, we need to see a confirmed breakout of this, of the, of the one-month ranging uh, market, so the asset to close above it and extends above it, okay, in order to imply that the doors are open to 113, 114, or even 115 territory, okay? If and only if we have a decisive breakout above the one-month ceiling. Is that clear? Hopefully it is. Let's zoom in into the intraday um, uh, setup. And let me use my intraday setup on this one uh, down to the one hour chart my dear friends we can see that there is further steam to the upside you can see that that the price is within the bollingers with the bollingers turning and pointing higher moving average are, are also pointing higher so this is the five and nine exponential moving averages magd keeps rising RSI and Stochastic remain above the, uh, basically within the overbought territory, but they're still pointing higher. There is no indication for a pullback yet, for a correction. So a very positive for the time being, intraday, short-term outlook for CAD yen, which looks to uh, that there is further <coughs> steam to the upside. So let's find together the uh, sorry let's trying to find some uh, short term resistance levels either using your pivot either using your uh, pivot Fibonacci extensions either using your ATRs using uh, it's up to you basically so the very next resistance areas, as I said, is the ceiling of the ranging market. And the very next one, based on the Fibonacci extension, is the 112.74. So uh, if uh, it managed to break above, to break at the, the ranging market, the very next resistance level is at 112.74 in the very, very short time frame. Okay. Yeah. So, next question. Uh, hey, hey, hi, everyone. Uh, Andy, you better uh, ask, uh, discuss this with your agent, with your agent, okay? With your account manager, etc. Benjamin, I'm a beginner, but how to start and the strategy that fits me, the beginner. Okay, first of all, as a beginner, you should start with the basics, as we keep saying. Uh, very, very basics. First of all, from um, <clears throat> all the technical side of the of the online trading, what is leverage, what is margin, what is uh, equity, free equity, what is um, a PIP, uh, all these basics in the Forex industry, okay? Also, how the fundamentals, as we call it, so how... All these news coming from the big, big economies like US, Europe, Japan, uh, China, Australia. How 
the, 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 why they have an impact on the prices, on the uh, gold price, on the oil price, on, on the currency market as well, why they're having an impact and how they could impact. So what each economic indicator, uh, uh, how it could impact the actual country's uh, currency or um, the metal industry or the commodity industry, etc. So you need to start uh, with the very, very basic. So uh, uh, start learning the theory of it, my dear uh, uh, friend. And once you uh, reach to a level that you got yourself familiar, at least with the theory, you can open a demo account, okay, in order to figure out what kind of trader you are, okay, to get yourself familiar with the platform. Uh, and at that point, once you figure out what kind of trader you are, uh, you can also start applying different strategies on the demo account to see which is the one that makes sense to you and you feel comfortable with it and it gives you good results. So you're going to keep a journal, you're going to write down a trading plan and uh, practice, practice, practice in a demo account until you have a a plan down, a strategy down, a setup down and you are ready to move to a live analysis, okay? Uh, there are a lot of steps if you're a beginner, so you need to spend time on it. You need to invest time um, <clears throat> with a constant learning because this is what the trading is. It's a constant learning in tra- trading and investments, etc. It's a constant learning. It's a, it, you need to keep yourself up to date with everything, economic uh, data, politics, geopolitics, corporate news and etc it's a constant learning for sure uh, sorry benjamin you ask about red and green in that case and even blue call uh, i'm confused i'm confused what you mean what each indicator is are you asking about my setup i'm using moving averages so this is a five exponential moving average this is a nine exponential moving average average this is a 50 day moving average and a 200 moving average this is the gray lines at bollinger bands uh, at the bottom we have three indicators momentum oscillators to be more precise macd stochastic rsi yeah and the fibonacci um I've seen, so far I have covered all the questions. I'm going to get back to the dollar. Uh, uh, okay, so. <clears throat> so, 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 so. Uh, in Facebook, Conan is asking what time frame is good for scalping. Scalping uh, refers to uh, to short time frames, and by me by saying short time frames, we mean thirty minute chart, fifteen minute chart, or even five minute chart. So the the, the scalping involves making a lot of multiple trades but in a very very short uh, period of time so it requires a, a very quick um, exit points as well uh, yeah so yeah that, that that's what is scalping is about uh, dear uh, Brayton there are a lot of scalping strategies that you can uh, uh, practice on in a demo account and see what 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 is uh, the one that you prefer and what is the one that um, it, it's it's working for you. Uh, so let me check. Let me get back to. Let me hide this. Let me check the news feed to see whether there is anything new coming up. As we have seen, though the initial reaction 
of dollar quickly faded. This is the dollar. So initially bounced higher, didn't manage to extend above uh, 106 and settle back to 105.70 territory. Uh, so uh, that it gives back, it brings back the consolidation mode for the dollar index. Anyway, we have um, that is a bit expected to be. Uh, op, 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 where is my? Ah, here we are. <clears throat> where is the calendar? I had my calendar somewhere. So that was a bit expected. I mean, the 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 day to continue into a more cautious mode, more, so to see uh, cons consolidation uh, in few assets and etc. Because still, still at the background, we have the all the attention to the Middle East. All the attention is still to the Middle East and any any signs of escalation. The week is once again packed with news. So uh, we have a lot of Fed speeches that they tend to affect significantly the dollar because they are like giving us some hints regarding what the Fed will do uh, next. So yeah, and we have the Fed favorite, favorite indicator. Uh, this Friday. Um, so, if, I'm not, if I remember right, let me double check in the economic calendar. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, my bad, it's next week. I was referring to the PC, the personal consumption expenditure. So, uh, either way, uh, Mr. Powell speech, speech, speaks uh, this week. Um, we had a, a late, another comment for, from Fed William earlier. So the, the Fed speeches will be um, could affect significantly the performance of the dollar this week. Okay, so uh, other than Mr. Powell, we have uh, yeah. Other than Mr. William so far today, we're gonna see Mr. Powell tomorrow. If I'm not mistaken, along with Jefferson, William again, Williams again. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Mr. Bauman uh, on uh, Wednesday. Baum, Bauman, Williams again, and Bostic on Thursday. A lot of Fed speeches, and on Friday. Uh, uh, the Fed's uh, gold spin. So bar bankers could be in the spotlight uh, this uh, week for uh, the US, for the for any uh, further si uh, signals regarding the US economy and the uh, dollar index, obviously. Obviously. Uh, Newsfeed, anything new com coming up? Okay, I can see from the news feed that Miss the Feds William. Um, uh, uh, actually confirms that uh, the the Fed should remain data dependent, and that for the time being, unfortunately for them, the data. Uh, I keep indicating uh, higher inflation, really hot inflation. So they are not a near any turning point with inflation. So what that means, it means that they should actually keep rates unchanged. So it's like it's, he seems to be a supporter of for the for the next for the next uh, meetings to keep the rates unchanged. This is. Uh, very, very briefly, what we can derive from his uh, comments. Guys, I think that's pretty much it. I cannot see any further questions from your side. Let me know if you need any, any, any support from my side. Uh, Euro do uh, dollar sideways after the, the, that initial reaction. Gold a bit. Dodge as well in, an, in a triangle as we... Uh, in a narrow triangle, as we mentioned earlier, uh, yen is the might be the the key mover 
of the day, of the week, of the year so far. So in a very, it's, 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 it's actually all the attention is on the yen, I believe, um, in general this week. And it's at a, a really high levels uh, with, um, uh, with the fear of uh, intervention anytime uh anytime soon so uh euro we have no one asked about euro about cable about oil bizarrely <laughs> oil bizarrely as well okay i'm gonna finish with them just very very briefly very very briefly uh euro dollar euro dollar here we are sideways as well mostly uh, yeah, actually, yeah, very sideways, uh, below the pivot point of the day, remains at the weak, at the weak, very, very weak territory after breaking the 107 territory with uh, the doors. Uh, the doors, since last week, the doors opened for uh, September's uh, lows. Uh, this is a bearish head and shoulder formation with the neckline being broken last week, indicating that uh, the asset is in a negative uh, negative momentum, in a negative outlook with the next, uh, we love the attention further to the downside to 105 or even 104 level uh, for the euro dollar. <clears throat> because of the uh, fact that ECB is expected to ease its policy, while on the flip side, Fed is expected to hold it uh, unchanged. So this is what we're seeing in the uh, in euro dollar. Uh, so, so that's pretty much it. I since I, I have not seen any news, any any further questions, um, I'm gonna call it date. Uh, as we already mentioned, yen is the weakest currency so far today. The stronger so far is is basically uh, everything other than yen. Uh, so it's uh, dollar is euro and pound a bit uh, stronger than uh, on the strong side of the uh, bar. If we of the bar, if we have to uh, compare, keep an eye on the news on the news okay it seems that the markets are depending on what will happen in the middle east thank you very much uh, for attending hopefully the session helped you any feedback is more than welcome uh, anything you need we're here to help you can contact us via social media um, you can use the uh, the messenger you can use the uh uh, the inbox in Instagram, in Facebook, and etc. And our email address as well. We are here to help. Uh, so feel free to let us know. Thank you very much. Have a great day ahead and see you again within the week. Miss. Possibly we're going to have another live. Uh, I cannot really tell when because uh, the next live uh, of the, for, the, for the current week will solely depend on any breaking news. So um, we will try to have uh, to uh, go uh, live as soon as uh, something we we'll have something breaking coming up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day. Take care. Risk management should be the number one on your list. Uh, never avoid it. Never avoid it. Always do your homework and be ready. Uh, before uh, taking any decision, before opening a trade. Thank you. Bye-bye.